DC and Warner Brothers are going back to the drawing board with their Flash movie. Variety has learned that Warner Brothers has tapped writer Joby Harold to do a page one rewrite of the Flash script. The movie has been on hold ever since it lost its director, Rick Famuyiwa, so Warner's decided that while it waits to find a replacement, the studio will take the script in a different direction. That direction remains to be seen, as does whether or not it will make its release date that is currently set for June 27th, 2018. John, will The Flash ever hit its release date now that it is getting a page one rewrite? Uh, to channel the inner Vince McMahon, no chance in hell. Uh, this, uh, it's yet another violinist going up to the deck of the Titanic to play as it sinks. Um, <laughs> it's... <laughs> Like, I, I almost feel like at this point when we mention DC, we should follow with da 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 um, oh, It's it, look, three directors. They've been through now three scripts. And now, a little over a year away from their proposed release date, they said, yeah, uh, this this isn't just script doctoring. This is a page one read. That means yeah. they've thrown it out. They've thrown it out, and they're starting again. Um, and look, for any one particular project, you go... Oh, okay. I mean, look, they're, they're not happy with what they got. It is better then to... If you're not happy with what you got, it is better to scrap it, start it again, and make sure you get it right. Absolutely is. But this is daily life now yeah. from Warner Brothers in D.C. Everything is about, we're doing this! Oh, no, turns out that was a sack of shit. Now we're going to do this. Nope, we didn't like that. And we got this director. No, now we got rid of him. Now we got this director. Oh, he left because we're, he didn't like us. And now we got this director. Now he's gone. We got this script. Oh, now this guy did a rewrite. Oh, now we're throwing that script out. And this is turning into the Ringling Brothers' big comeback because it's a circus. Um, the, it's just ridiculous. And, you know, before you get too tempted to say... You know, why are you, you trashing on DC and stuff like that? I get frustrated because I am a big fan of the yeah. DC properties. And it's when you're a fan. Like, if the Toronto Maple Leafs, for a sports analogy, if they're losing, you don't care because you don't love the Maple Leafs. If you love the Maple Leafs, you care and you get angry. And, and I, somebody who thinks Man of Steel is a masterpiece of a film... Uh, and, you know, I'm a defender of Justice League and Suicide Squad, but they clearly divided the audiences and they were not as good as they should have been. Uh, I just get frustrated because you hear from Marvel, right? Marvel, I keep hearing people say this too, well, Marvel had that whole Edgar Wright thing. Yes, but that was way in advance. And everyone was still saying how much that there was going to be problems, though, with it too. But yeah. because they had a ship, I guess, that was already, I guess, not hitting an iceberg and sinking, as you said <laughs> before, it, it's easier to push the blame towards DC right now. No, absolutely. The thing is, this isn't a movie in, movie out like clockwork occurrence with the Marvel films. Every once in a while, oh, we've pushed this one release date three months, or we've we've done this, or we, once in a while. But it feels like every single DC project, and as somebody who's a fan of DC, I'm getting really, I mean, you guys already know I'm getting really frustrated with it, but I'm, I'm completely frustrated with it at this point. Three directors, three scripts, back to page one when we're a year and a bit away from the release date. I, I don't know, what do you think, Christian? Well, first, hey, hey Adam, can you bring that picture up again? Um, I didn't know that both uh, Liev Schreiber and Jonathan Voiko had a kid. I mean, look, look, look at that. Um, but what, what I will say about this particular, I agree with you, man. It's, it's, it, it, the sports analogy is, is the best because it's like when in the 90s, the Yankees were crappy. They had Steve Sachs and Jesse Barfield, and it was just, and I'm like, come on, guys. Get, get it together and they and because they had the resources to do it they had the money to do it they just couldn't put the team together and then 96 rolled around and and it started to work out okay we're not talking about this season um but this is how i feel about dc it's the same thing it's like you have the material you have some of the great you your villains are far superior than to Marvel's any, villains. Yeah. Anything Marvel Marvel's has, villains. your villains are the Way best better. there's so many more characters have so much history Honestly, the stories in the DC universe, I enjoy way more than I like Marvel. They just can't figure out how to do it. So it's one of these things, to, and I, I, don't, I don't know, you assume and you speculate that there's too many cooks in the kitchen. They get rid of people, the, the higher Silverman left, and then people are leaving left and right. Screenwriters are leaving, directors are leaving, composers are leaving. Everybody's leaving because they don't know what they're doing. It's just a slop house mess. So it's... They need one person. They need to bring in that one, that Joe Torrey, if you will. They need to bring in that person, the Kevin Feige, and they've got to get it together. 
And don't announce stuff like this. Don't announce that you're going to do, we're doing a Flash movie. Don't announce it until it's happening. Right. They announced that, you know, the Black Adam thing like years ago. And then they finally said, oh, now, now it'll probably happen. Shut up until you're right about to start filming. This is, this is why this is a bad thing to s announce things before you're ready to start going when it's not a, a, a piece of unit. And you know, the other frustrating thing is you can say, okay, well, if you have this natural disadvantage and you have this natural disadvantage, I'm sorry, and I know a lot of Marvel fans are going to scream at their monitors right now when I say this. DC has the greatest superheroes. You have Batman and you have Superman, and they are the two all-time best superheroes ever. All right. Then you got a third member of that trinity, by the way, in Wonder Woman, who's got a film coming out that all of us are just dying to see. Um, it, that's the trailer that won Comic Con to me was that Wonder Woman trailer. I think it looks fantastic. They got a great director on board. You have all the money in the world. You have access to the greatest talent in the world. You have every advantage, every single advantage. Best source material, amazing finances behind you. Big distribution network, amazing filmmaking talent at your disposal. There's no excuse, none. And all I can do, and all any of us can do as DC fans, is just wait with bated breath for that Wonder Woman movie to come out. And it's like the Yankees. Yeah. All is dim and dark until they crack one out of the park. One championship. If they will can turn do around. that with Wonder Woman, everything will feel better. There's another great sports analogy. It says, you know, when teams have all these problems, it's just because they're winning, they're losing. I mean, like there's there's locker room drama. People hate each other. But there's a great sports crow that says this, winning cures everything. Yep. Wonder Woman comes out, crushes it, everything will feel a lot better. But right now it feels kind of bleak. I don't know, Jeremy, how do you see all this? <laughs> well, I have no sports analogies. I just have analogies of family, life, and broken hopes and dreams. I want to be <laughs> supportive of DC because, like you said, I'm a huge fan of DC property. I have a bunch of DC comic books. I've read them. I love the characters. It's it's very it's great material from a very competent studio. I don't know what's happening almost, over there. It, Warner Brothers consistently cranks out great right. films. So, yeah, and so then they stumble when it comes to DC. It's, it's like we're going upside down math. A positive and a positive equals a negative. I don't get what's happening over there right now. <laughs> it's like I want to be supportive, and I want to. It, it's kind of like if 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 a parent has a kid who starts making bad decisions, so you forgive these bad decisions as they go. But at a point when your kid has come at you week at uh, upon week upon week, like I was saying before we we started airing, I was like, this is getting absurd at this point. You know, like mm. it's just every other week something crazy happens and something's getting rewritten or something's scrapped or something's getting turned on its head. It's like if your kid comes at you, and it's like. Um, I dropped out of school and blew my inheritance on black tar heroin and unprotected <laughs> sex. I'd, you, you have to be like, I can't support that. <laughs> I, I, I no longer can support your life decisions. And it this sounds more like a biographical story uh, of yours. John, <laughs> uh, John, we had a pact. You weren't supposed to say that on air. Uh, but it's getting to the point where when people online are like, why do you, like, it's like, yeah, I, I do have to make excuses as to why I'm, I'm still looking forward to DC movies, but it's because it's like the logic part of my brain gets turned off for the fanboy hope. It's like, I hope they do well because I want to see them do well, but stories like this just, they kick me, man. They kick me right where it hurts. Clark, you're hearing all this kind of stuff. What's your reaction? I'm taking it all in. <laughs> taking it all in. No, look, I think, honestly, my reaction is slow down. I, I'm glad they're doing a page one rewrite. Do it. Take your time. Uh, to me, the biggest problems happened when, you know, after Man of Steel, uh, untitled Superman follow-up movie turned into Batman v Superman because we got to introduce Justice League and Justice League is cut. It's putting the cart before the horse. Take your time, guys. Like all of you have said, we love these characters. These are smart, awesome, cool characters that already have this built-in fan base. So take your time. We're going to be there by the time the movie comes out. It's not like we're going to go, oh, well, I almost said a bad word, but it's not like we're going <laughs> to say forget Superman. Like he's not, you know, I'm not interested. Of course we're always going to be interested. And the other thing that I think is really interesting is that The Flash is telling a very compelling story on television. Mm -hmm. So why yeah. can't they figure out how to do it in a movie? Um, you know, so take your time, guys. Slow down and, and, and do the page one rewrites. Get it right. Don't get it out fast. And I think you raise a great point. Well, two great points, really. It is, as a DC fan, even more concerning when you step back and see why do you seem to have this figured out on TV <laughs> and yet struggle? But the other thing is, is this too, I think this is where the real core of it is, and I think Clark just kind of uncovered it a bit, is that it's not so much that they're going back and doing a page one rewrite. Uh, because like we said, like I said before, get it, do the right thing. If, if it's a bad script, don't go ahead and make a bad script. 
It's what it means that once again they have to go back and do a page one rewrite. It's not so much anger at the current situation. It's as a fan being upset that, well, this just points to the fact you've been making mistake after mistake before. Why have we come to this point? Why has it gotten to this point that you didn't just wait until you had the right script in the first place and then go, now that we have our script, now let's cast our guy, now let's set a release date, now let's get a director who's going to be here for more than six minutes, and then move ahead and make the picture. I mean, so, I, I don't know. Like, at this point, let's, let's go hypothetical here, because I believe Wonder Woman is going to be a really good film. I have a lot of trust in Patty Jenkins. I like... The, the, everything we've seen, they seem to be getting the right tone from what we've seen in the trailers. I believe it's going to be really good. I do. That's what I believe. But let me ask you the hypothetical. Let's say Wonder Woman comes out, and best case, it's, it's as divisive as Suicide Squad and, and Justice League was. Worst case, it's just not a good film. Do you think, and, and Christian, I'll start with you, do you think diehard DC fans may at that point start to lose their faith in the movie franchise. Maybe, but I just got this image when you said that because I think Patty Jenkins is going to try her damnness to make this thing awesome. I got this image that the studio executives at, at Warner Brothers right now are the minions. And, and, and like, they're just running around. They don't know what to do. And they're telling Patty Jenkins, she's like, wait, you want me to do what? And it's like, I feel that's what happened to David Ayer. I feel like that's even what happened with Zack Snyder. I feel like there's just minions running around making these bad decisions. So the question is, well, I don't know. It, because I, here's the thing. The, the thing was with the diehard DC fans. They don't think that... Suicide Squad had a problem. They don't Great think point. Batman v Superman had a problem. So to them, they're they're doing it right. Yeah, they're There's a lot of the hardcores, but there are that those the other side of the fan that maybe right on the fence that they might say, "Okay, guys, I, I I've been there with you. What can we do to fix this?" Clark, what do you think the response would be? Uh, you know, look, the numbers don't lie. I know that sounds like I I just feel like uh, I I think that the the like you said, Christian, the diehard fans who who you're right, they don't have a problem with what Warner Brothers has been putting out. So I don't think that there's going to be anything that will turn them off, mm. and and that's totally fine. But I think you know, I, these like I said, the numbers don't lie. If Wonder Woman comes out, if it is div divisive, and people don't show up, Warner Brothers. I think needs to take a real good hard look at what they have in front of them and go okay maybe we do one at a time right now maybe we're not going to do this plate spinning we've got Justice League in production we've got Aquaman in production let's see let's just cool out a little bit and I also think they should give Berlanti a crack at this I just got this I got this image of a minion going to the bank like wait, 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 wait. oh billion right. dollar check yeah we'll exactly. catch that exactly. <laughs> exactly. so now you're like how yeah. that happened Batman hat on <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? All this talk of minions is making me so happy right now. 